וזהו, and this is what it's written. ויגרש מפניך אויב. ואת השם יתברך is pushing away the enemy from us. מפניך דקדושה. Why it's, me, why it's written, ויגרש מפניך, from your face, that the enemy will not be able to stand in front of your face, מפניך דקדושה, means the face of קדושה, the seventy illuminating face of Hashem יתברך. ויאמר, השמד, the enemy is saying, השמד, לשון שמד, לשון עבודה זרה, that people are going to cut themselves from Judaism, חס ושלום, and going to worship idols. היינו תאוות ממון. Which idols? Idols of money. רבוי סי, this is something that we are talking about it a lot in our wonderful yeshiva and in this class particularly um, that ממש 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 it's so ridiculous to chase after money. Money is something <coughs> that הקדוש ברוך הוא is giving to you because he wants you to be alive. The one that Hashem wants him to be alive, he's going to feed him. So you don't need to be worried about Parnassah at all. And even though that it sounds crazy the way that we're talking, run to the fields, ask for Parnassah, the real reality is that you don't need to do no effort for Parnassah. You see the nations, you see animals, you see mosquitoes, you see everyone have Parnassah and they're not worrying. The Gemara is saying, you ever saw a fox that is running to look for his Parnassah? You saw a giraffe that is uh, scared what he's going to do with his mortgage? Everything is good. He needs to eat, he's bending and he's eating. He reaches his hand and he's taking and eating. And you're, look at your sons and the kids, they're worried about Parnassah. They're not worried about Parnassah. Because they're counting that the parents are going to give them Parnassah. Always when they were hungry, they found the food. So also us. Also, check yourself. Always when you were hungry, you found the food. We need to work on the faith so much that it's going to be clear as the sun, as the day. That Ramash, it's obvious that Hashem is going to give us the Parnassah. It's not something that we even, even when the person is worried about Parnassah, Actually, by being worried about Parnassah, you ruin the vessel of, of receiving Parnassah. Mm -hmm. Because, and Araf Shalom is writing that, Mamash, in, in, he's writing that in the end of the book of, uh, of uh, Chinuch Be'ava, the, the, the edu how do you call it in English? Education with love. Education with love. So education is the word. We're looking for the right word. We said that education, maybe it's not the right one, but found out that it is the right one. So in the end of Chinuch Be'ava, Education with Love, Rav Shalom is talking over there about the, the way that the person needs to deal with his problems, eh, in, with his kids. And, and then Rav Shalom is saying that any hishtadlut that is not by prayers, not by faith, just makes Hashem angry. Makes Hashem angry. If you're trying to, for the best reason of them all, you want to achieve something holy, something in Kedusha, but you're trying to do it without Hashem, so you cancel all of the Torah. You cannot bring the Shekhinah by, by physical actions. You cannot. It has to be something that you're bonding yourself to the main wisdom of Hashem Itbarach, that it's Enod Milvado, everything is in the hands of Hashem Itbarach. And I know that you are all crazy, and I'm talking to a crazy class. I know that, don't worry, I'm aware of your problems. I know that you're much wackos. <laughs> I know it, I understand your difficulty, that I'm saying something and you want to do it, and you're running to the fields, and you're doing it by the duyot, and you don't see the money, and you don't know what to do, because, hey, I was davening, and I know that you have thousands of up and downs, and I have them also. But still, we need to understand, if something is not working like you want it to work, you're not achieving the things that you want to achieve, you just need to wait. You just need to try to find another reason why it's not working. Not to twist the Torah. Like the Torah Shalom talked yesterday in Purim. If you cannot succeed something in your Avodat Hashem, it's not the time to find excuses and answers why it's not working. 
We need to wake up Chatzot. All right, you're not waking up. It doesn't mean that today in this generation we're too tired and we cannot. No, we just don't have the merit. Hashem doesn't give us that wonderful present. But we should wake up Chatzot. And we don't know how to do it. All right, find solutions. Go to sleep earlier. Don't eat so much at night, at the evening before you're going. <laughs> Simple of them all. Daven on that. The Takadosh Baruch Hu gonna open that path for you. And not to twist reality and to say, no, I'm not supposed to. Probably it's not one, my, my mitzvah. <coughs> Don't twist the truth. The truth is that Hashem, He is Zanum Farnes Lakol. He is giving the Parnasa. The truth is that Hashem, He is Mezavek Zivugim. He is bringing your wife to your hands. The truth is that Hashem Pakad Etzara, that Hashem, He is the one that brings kids, babies, into the woman's mm, mm, uh, womb. And not the husband. It doesn't written by Avraham Pakad et Sarah. It's written, Adra Barashi is saying that Avraham wasn't able to be with Sarah because he was too old. The Rashi is explaining that it wasn't Avraham at all. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu done because he didn't want people to suspect that Sarah become pregnant from Avimelech, he created the face of Yitzchak look like the face of Avraham. It's all in the hands of Hashem. It's Hashem done that. It's not Abraham, no, because Abraham, he is the father of Yitzchak, so this is why Yitzchak looked like his father. No. Hashem is painting the faces. Hashem is doing everything. Hashem pakad et And Hashem is going to solve all of your problems. It depends only in the kindness of Hashem in Barach. If we're going to have the merit, uh, we're going to dive in on that before. But Hashem is with us. You see, there is people that are married without davening on that before. There is people that they have panasa without davening on that before. But it's not the same. Hanash is saying to us, El anar palalti. On that kid, on that boy, I was davening. And Eli promised to her that he's going to give her a bigger, a smarter, a wiser, a genius, better boy than Shmuel Anavi. She said, I don't want. On that one, I was davening. Means that if with Tfilot you're going to receive a certain Shiduch, even though that the Shiduch is going to be eh, not so so, it's better than any other woman in the world because you received it from Hashem in Barach. Means that when you're davening, you're opening the, 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 the path of, of faith. You're letting Hashem in Barach reveal His kingdom, reveal His beauty, show His supervision inside your life. This is, you're developing an awareness to Hashem it Barach. Kirvat Elohim Litov, to be close to Hashem, this is what it is good in this world. Vanuchi Esmach Bashem. When you have Hashem, you can be happy. You can have a million dollars, you can have a gorgeous woman, a genius, and mute, and everything, and you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. Because you have to have the Shekhinah in your house. You have to have the Shekhinah in your house. If you don't have the Shekhinah in your house, you don't have nothing. A beautiful woman can be a curse. A million dollars can bring you to debt. Everything can ruin your life if you don't have Siata Dishmaya with them. And to bring Siata Dishmaya into, the, to, into your house, into your reality, it's only by prayers. It's only by Torah, by Tfilah, Tshuva, Tzedakah. Only by Torah and Mitzvot. And the main mitzvah, main mitzvah to attach ourselves to Hashem in Barach, it's Itbodedut. It's Tfilah Midoraita. If we're all Litvaks and we don't want to say Itbodedut, so we can say Tfilah Midoraita, the mitzvah of Tfilah Midoraisa. And it's, uh, it's working. Everyone are obligated to that mitzvah. To pray, to ask for your needs from Borah Olam. And then you can be sure, more than sure, 100% confidence. <laughs> Relax. I made my job. Now I'm going to have Parnassa. I won't have Parnassa. It's not my business. Relax. I davened. And I know again you're all crazy and you're going to the field and now you're going to drop the responsibility of bringing Parnassa to your houses because oh, I made my half an hour. No. If you see that you're not bringing Parnassa, you need to work, work more than half an hour. You need to work six hours. There was one person that came to Arab Shalom, I told you that. He told, Arav, he told him that he was in debt of three million dollars. And Arab Shalom told him, go and do six hours in Bodedut. And that person went also to Arab Berland. And he asked Arab Berland, he told him, Arab, Arab Shalom told me to do six hours in Bodedut. 
Do you, say, do you agree this is the right solution for me to do six hours in Bodhidhu? Tarav Berlin told him, you should do six hours for 30 days. <laughs> this is what happens when you go to a second <laughs> rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, one answer. This is it. Be simple and wise. Simple, yeah. And go with that advice. But he went. Don't worry. He didn't lose. He didn't lose. That person was simple and he accepted it with love and he went and he done. He didn't have a choice. When you realize that you don't have a choice, six hours a day, it's not too much, so much time. Really? It sounds hard because the Yetzirah wants you not to do that chas shalom. But you saw here in Purim, we could do six hours, five days straight, one after the other, and there, was, and there is people in this class that done that. And in the yeshiva, there is more guys that done that. Five days, one after the other, six hours, tomorrow six hours, after it six hours, and then again and again. Yes, people done that. <clears throat> Here in the class, there is three or more people that done that. It's not something so special. It's a possibility. People can do it. And that person went, and he done 30 days, six hours every day. After 33 or 34 days, he finished his Ibodadriot. He finished after three or four days after it. He got a phone call from a friend. He asked him, what's going on with you? What's, he told him, I mean, that's a horrible situation. Three million dollars. How you said, Mshita Tregel, bankruptcy. And, and he don't know what to do. He told him, I'm depositing in your bank account $3 million. This is it. In one phone call, in one conversation. You want to find him? He's in Shmuel Navi Forest. No, no, the guy gave the money. He's in Shmuel Navi Forest. I do. <laughs> 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 Every problem that you have, you don't have. In this generation, I told you, once I came to Arab Shalom with a, one of the friends asked me to, to ask Arab Shalom a question on his situation. And he wrote a letter, three pages to Arab Shalom. And I brought that, those papers and Arab looked and he listened and everything. And he read and I explained, translated it to him and everything. In the end, he told me, listen. Tell him that I'm going to dive in at him. I'm going to try to help him with my tefillot. And that he should do more tefillot. And I'm telling you, Dror, that actually there is nothing else to tell people in this generation except of daven. Daven and daven and daven. And this is it. And when one of the guys made few times, six hours it bodedut, on having kids, and I told that to Arav Shalom. So Arav Shalom told me, because of that, the dead person made six hours on having kids a few times because of that, and he gave me um, uh, a lot of, of uh, knives of, of Brit Mila, of, and that it is gula for, for people to have boys from Rabbeinu, it's written in Sefer Amidot. So Rav Shalom told me so because of that, and he took out those mm, few, maybe almost ten knives and told me, give it, hand it to all of the Avrachim that you know that they don't have boys. So you see that you have, you have by that filot, you're building a vessel. You're creating reality. By words, simple words of tefillah, of it bodadut, of it bodadut, of it bodadut, more words, more words. Rav Shalom said, the person that learns in Yeshiva Tchut Shel Chesed and he doesn't do Sha'id Bodadut, there is a side to say that he's stealing from me. There is a side to say that you're stealing from a Rav. If you're learning here and you're not listening to the voice of a Rav that's saying to you, this is your Rav. The Gemara is saying there is two Braithot. One is saying, Le'olam yadu Adam bimkom Rabo. Always a person has to live close to his Rabbi. And another Braitha contradicts. And saying, a person never allows to live close to his rabbi. So the Gemara is asking, how come? How can it be? They're arguing. So the Gemara is answering, Hade kaifle, hade lo kaifle. Here it's when you listen to the Rav, it's good that you're going to live close to him. Here when you're not listening to him, it's better that you're going to be far away. As that we're learning in the Yeshiva of Rav Shalom, we're not allowed not to do it by the dude. We're not allowed. We don't have that privilege. We don't have that privilege not to do it by the dude. We have to do it by the dut. We're students, we're followers of Rav Shalom. We have to dedicate every day, one hour of our lives to listen to the Rav. You learn in the class of a Rav and you, you don't believe in your Rav. You think that you're wiser than him. Why are you not listening to him? Because you're wiser, because you know better. That you don't have time, that you're in a rush, that you have problems. You're wiser than him. He's not aware to your problems, a Rav. And you are aware. 
הרב אלחנן told me that when he, when he was with הרב שלום in South Africa, they were um, accepting people, הרב שלום was talking private, private uh, conversations with people. And he said he would receive the pitka and he would ask, it's all written in English. הרב שלום, he doesn't read English. And he was receiving the, the notes and he was asking the name and the person for an example would say, Moshe Levi. So Rav Shalom told him, you're not eating kosher. Hmm? So that person told him, oh, Rav, chasse shalom, my kitchen is kosher, my house, everything is kosher, we're eating kosher. Rav Shalom told him, I didn't say that your kitchen is not kosher. <laughs> I said that you are not eating kosher. So he said, why? Why are you saying I'm not eating kosher? He told him, so because in your business trips, when you're eating in restaurants, so you're eating treif and evelot. And you're not eating kosher. And that person becomes to be white. And another person came to Arav Shalom. And Arav Shalom told him, you're not a kosher Jew. And he's a litai, a duk, a vrech, with a suit, with a hat. Arav Shalom told him, you're not a kosher Jew. He told him, me, I'm not a kosher Jew. Arav Shalom looked at him and told him, you want me to tell you what you done yesterday night? That you're going to admit that you're not a kosher Jew? Arav Elchanan said, the person was pale. Color of the wall. <laughs> what can you say? If we have shalom, so we cannot see those things daily from Rav Shalom that he's got in divine spirit, Ruch HaKodesh, because we don't need it. It's not going to help us. It's going to make us confused. People so far in that place, they need it. They need to see Ruch HaKodesh, they're going to believe. We believe to Rav Shalom because we can see that his advice are working in our lives. Because he's reviving us with his Torah. We don't need miracles to believe in him. Adraba. Rabbein was davening on, the, on that, that the miracles that he made, the muftim that he made, are going to be erased from the memory of people. And Mamash, we almost never heard nothing, almost nothing from the miracles that Rabbein made. It's not, this is not the chizuk that you have a rabbi, that he, one, one of the students of, of Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev said, that someone from a different Hasidut came to him and told him that his Rebbe, his Admo, can revive the dead, can wake up a dead person. The student of Rabbeinu told him, my Rebbe is reviving life people. He's reviving me. He's helping me. It's bigger than to revive a dead person. To help a person that has got Yetzir Ara, person that, that is dead, all right, so it's a Mofet, so okay. But to help someone that has got a Yetzir Ara like us, it's a crazy Yetzirah. Wants to drag us to all of the horrible places in the world. And the Rav is planting in us the will to live, the will to do tshuva, the will to take responsibility on yourself, to deal with reality, to deal with, with real life, to take responsibility. Stop hiding like Adam Arishon was hiding. It was more horrible than the sin itself. The fact that Adam it Chabad, that Adam was hiding, it was worse than Adam was sinning before. All right, you were sinning. You had Yetzirah. Yetzirah attempted them to sin. Okay, I can understand it. But now you're hiding and you're blaming your wife in everything. This is worse. You're blaming, he was blaming Hashem. He was blaming, blaming Chava. He was blaming the Yetzirah. He was blaming everyone, not taking responsibility. This is worse. But the Chizuk of Adam Rishon, what was the good point? What was he doing? What was real? That he said, Va'ochel. What it means, Va'ochel? HaKadosh Baruch Hu asked him, what, Where are you standing? What's your status? He answered, Va'ochel. Rav Shalom, I, I think maybe it was from the, the Kotzke Rebbe. I'm not sure. Yeah. From yeah, him he Kotzke. said. So he said that, that Va'ochel, it means not that I was eating. Vauchel, it's in the future. I'm going to eat in the future. Mean that Adam Rishon was admitting to Akadosh Baruch Hu that he ate and that now he's got a horrible desire to eat more. And this is his plans and this is his status, that he's planning to sin more. And this is a real confession. This is the good point of Adam Rishon in that situation. Even though that he tried to avoid dealing and, and to hide and, and not, to, not to admit in nothing, but when Hashem asked him, really, where are you holding? What's your level? So he said, look, I have a tava. I have a desire. I'm sick. And this is our real tshuva. That the person is going to be modeva ozev. Admit and dropping. 
And even if it's hard for you to drop, you're saying, Hashem Yitbach, I want to drop, but I'm afraid. I don't really want to drop. I still love it. I still find chiyut in it. So please, Hashem Yitbach, take the chiyut out of that and let me enjoy and satisfy myself from Limud Torah, from Tshuva, from Tfilah, from kindness, from Mitzvot Shel Chesed. Today, Rav Eyal told me there is people that are dedicating hours every day on kindness of mitzvot of chesed before of Pesach, collecting money for machim and making matzot and it's all mamash l'shem shamayim and you can see it in the streets you can see people that are <coughs> dedicating <coughs> dedicating their lives into avodat Hashem and everyone have to find his point of truth what Hashem wants for me what's my avodat Hashem one going to find himself dedicating hours and hours helping people and collecting food pro um, 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 Amazon food process products. products and other one going to dive and another one going to learn that the limud going to be l'shem shamayim I'm learning for the merit of all of Am Israel say those words before you're sitting to learn say those words I'm learning for all of Am Israel I'm learning l'shem shamayim when you're learning like that, all of your limud become to be totally different. I told you that once I asked one of the rabbis, Rav Rafaeli, I asked him if he can give me an advice on, on Avat Torah, on Limud Torah. What, what I'm going to do? I told him that it's very hard for me to learn. A few years ago, he told me, you need to dedicate your limud that's going to be Le'ilu Neshamot for the satisfaction, for the Yilu Neshama of souls that passed away, that they don't have people that are going to learn for them. And then they're going to enjoy your limud, so they're going to dive on you that you're going to learn more. You're creating reality by words, by talking to Hashem in Barach. And with it, Bodedut, with Tefillah, we can achieve everything. Everything. And if you see that you're davening on a subject and HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't bring it to you, you need to talk to Hashem Baruch on that. Hashem, open my eyes. Let me see. Why are you not helping me in that situation? What's going on? Why am I stopping the bounty from coming? Maybe I need to do tshuva on something. Hashem, reveal my eyes. Open my eyes that I'm going to be able to see how I am stopping the bounty from coming. It's written in the Midrash. Rav Shalom said it once, that every day HaKadosh Baruch Hu is influent, he's giving 2,000 years of, of Shefa, of bounty, into the world. Every day, to each person. Everyone is receiving, supposed to receive. It's an option, it's Bekoach, it's an optional mm, thing. To receive Shefa, bounty, of 2,000 years daily. And us, and the main thing that we ruin, ruin the, the vessel of, 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 of having the parnasa is by the fact that we're not believing in Hashem Yitvarach, that we don't trust Hashem. This, the, the, the confidence in Hashem Yitvarach, this is the main vessel for everything. When you know that Hashem Yitvarach is the one that gives you the wisdom, this is the vessel to receive the wisdom. When you know that Hashem Yitvarach is the one that creates Shalom Bayit, and not you, not by flowers, not by diamond rings, and not by compliments, nothing, only Hashem. You can come with baskets of foods and, and, and jewelries and compliments and good words to the house and it's going to be like hell. It can be, mm, mm, the, Rav Shalom said that a house without Shalom bite, hell, it's like a, how you say, sniff? Branch. Only a branch of, of, of your house. Hell can be one branch from your house if a real house doesn't have Shalom Bayit. It can be horrible. Mamash horrible. But when you know that Hashem Barach is the one that took his Shechina from your house and you need to beg that he's going to bring the Shechina back into your house, then you created the vessel for Shalom Bayit, for the Shechina to be. We're throwing everything and we just believe in Hashem. Just believe in Hashem. No more Avodah Zarah. Rabbi Yitzchak Breiter, he said, all of before, before he, he went closer to Breslev, before he heard about Rabbi Kadosh, he, he was learning, he was one of the most important students in Yeshivat Chachmei Lublin, in, in Poland. He said that when he was, in his confessions, he was writing letters to Uman, to, to friends, the Breslevers in Uman, he said, until I heard about Rabbi until I started learning the words of Rabbi I was serving Avodah Zarah, worshipping idols, 
Betahara, purification, pure. I was pure, but I was worshipping idols. When you're thinking all of the time, Hishtadlut, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to bring my parnasa, it's all Avodah Zarah. It's all Avodah Zarah. You don't have the vessels? All right, go to the field and daven. Daven on your awareness. Daven on your mind. Daven that Hashem is going to give you a heart. You have desires, you have lust. It's, it's a shtuyot. It's not exist. It's imagine, it's imagine, 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 imaginations. imaginations. It's all dimyonot. It's not reality. Yetzara is just imagination. You are the one that has the free choice to choose what you want to do with your life. So he's saying, all right, but it's attacking me and attacking me. You're right. It's attacking. Like that Arab Baruch told us a few minutes ago. It's attacking and attacking and attacking. And we need to run to Hashem, to run to Hashem, to run to Hashem. <clears throat> People can learn Gemarot, can learn Likutei Moran, can learn all of the books, all of Tzifrei Chassidut, and not to understand what you're talking about. My wife, she had a friend that she is religious before that we made tshuva. She and her, they are friends before that we made tshuva. Mom, she is from, from birth. And she is very strong in religious. Mama, she is strong. She is a real kosher woman. And my wife, now, she talked to her after a few years that they were not talking. And my wife, she told her um, things about... And she, and she herself, she is saying words about it bodedut, that it's a very important thing to do it bodedut, and this and that. And she's talking. And my wife, she told her in a certain situation, in the conversation, she told her, you need to daven on that. It happened because you have, maybe you haven't davened enough on that. So that nice woman, she, she asked her, what do you mean that I haven't davened on that enough? And then you can realize that that woman, she's, she can talk about it bodedut. She can talk about, yes, I'm davening on it. She can talk about it for years. She can know the Torah and all of the mitzvot. And she cannot open her mouth to talk to Borei Olam that this is what it means to pray. And she cannot do it. She doesn't understand that concept of talking to the Creator. She cannot understand it. She can read it in the Gemarot. And um, rabbis can learn Gemarot all day long. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa and all of the tzaddikim coming to Hashem, talking to Hashem, asking for Hashem. And they're not doing it. How come you're not doing it? There is a block. There is Yetzara of imagination. No, you are davening. You are. He's telling him stories all of the time. Stories. Yes, you're davening. Yes, Shmona Yisra. Yes, Shmona Yisra. Shmona Yisra. Shmona Yisra. And the mitzvah mid the oraita of tefillah, you dropped it. You forgot that it exists. Mitzvah of tefillah mid the oraita. It's to talk to the Creator and to tell him, Father, I need help. Father, give me your hand, or that I'm drowning. I cannot eat without you because I'm going to eat like an animal. If you're not going to help me, going to give me siyata dishmaya, I have a body, Bore Olam. It's an animal body. It's exactly like the bodies of, of, of all of the other animals with desires. I'm going to jump on the food. I need your help, Bore Olam. Only like that you can eat like a human being. Only, this is the obligation of to say, Birkata Amotzi Lechem Mina Aretz and Birkata Perot on the fruits. This is the obligation. It's not that it's enough. It's to wake you up that this is what you need to do. Rabbi Nachman Ibrahim, when he was young, when he was a kid, after that he was doing all of the brachot in the meal, he was saying, thank you, Bore Olam, on the cucumber. Thank you, Bore Olam, on the potatoes. Thank you, Bore Olam, on the piece of chicken. Thank you, Bore Olam, on the water. Thank you, Bore Olam. On every dish and dish, on every kind of food that he had on the table, table he was saying, thank you, Bore Olam. Harav Shalom, you're going to see him doing motzi lechem in Aretz. After the first bite, for maybe seven, eight minutes, he's just thanking on the food. You cannot sit and eat with him. <laughs> you cannot enjoy the meal. He's doing a motzi. And then, seven, eight minutes, every Shabbos, every Suda, he's talking for, with Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, on the seat, on the chair. Thank you, Hashem, on the table. Thank you, Hashem, that you gave us plates and everything. Chad pe'ami, one time and you can throw it. Don't need to wash the things. Thank you, Hashem, on the, on the good food, on the good smell. Thank you, Hashem, for letting us eat, that you love us so much. And why not to do it? It makes you ha healthy. It makes you normal. 
When you're talking to Hashem, you become to be normal. When you forget Hashem, you're crazy. Crazy. He needs to eat. What's he going to do? There is something over there that he haven't ate that yet. What's he going to do? Maybe other people are going to take it. What's going to be? <laughs> because you're not davening. Because you're not davening. You forgot Hashem. Please Hashem, let me eat. Help me, be with me. Support me. Make me happy. That I'm going to be happy with Hashem. Not that Tchina and Chum is going to make me happy, Barolam. Please, that Hashem, you're going to make me happy. Not another slice of pizza, not a shtuyot. Let me be happy with Hashem. Hashem, thank you. Person needs to serve Hashem with Barach in the level that he eats. The Lechem, Lechem, Pat Bamelach Tochal, bread with salt. Umayim Bam Surat Ishteh, in a small amount of water. Small amount of water. You're measuring the water that you're drinking. This is the only way when we're sacrificing our desires to Hashem in Barach. When we're throwing our selfish will and we're canceling ourselves to Hashem in Barach. Again and again. And to fail again and to fail again. With failures you learn humility. You learn how to be humble. Without failures you're going to think that you're a genius. That you're so successful. That you're so great. That you're going to imagine that you're Elohim, that you're Avodah Zarah. You're going to worship yourself. You're going to say to yourself, I'm such a Talmid Chacham, look at me. In 10 years of tshuva, how much I achieved. How much I achieved in 10 years. People cannot achieve those things in 10 years. Look, Balei Tshuva, what's going on? This is a promise. Thoughts like those, it's a promise that you're going to fail. Again, and again, and again, and again. Until you're going to come to Hashem Itbarach, I'm going to tell him, Baruch Olam, I'm nothing. Thank you. Please help me. Please heal me. Please help me. Please save me for myself. Save me from my Yetzirah. A person is damaging himself a lot more than anyone else can damage him. You're damaging yourself with your shtuyot, with your nonsense, with the fact that you're afraid to deal with your reality. So you're sick. So what? So go to the doctor. Go to the field, to the Rofei Cholam O Yisrael, and tell him, heal me, bro, I'm crazy, I have thoughts like a goy, I'm sorry, bro, I'm thinking like a goy, heal me, bro, heal me. Help me, that I'm going to think like a Jew. I'm in your hands, bro, let me be concentrated in Kedusha, in good things, not to have violent thoughts, not to have angry thoughts, not to be vicious and rude and, and horrible. Heal me. I'm, 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 I'm impure, I'm not tahor, I'm not pure. Heal me, give me good thoughts. Rabbeinu said, good thoughts, it's Yetzir Tov. Bad thoughts, it's Yetzir Ara. I have Yetzir Ara, I have bad thoughts all of the time. Money, honor, women, food, tiredness, what's going to be, worries, all of shtuyot, it's all kfirot. Borolam, let me trust you. Let me believe in you. If I have a lacking, I should ask it from you. Not from the lawyer, not from the wife, not to check if she's awake or she's asleep. Not to be crazy. Not to be sick in our minds. To bring Hashem Yidvach into our lives. It's only by talking to Him daily. One hour, it's the minimum, minimum, minimum that you can be sane like that. If you don't have one hour, you're crazy. I promise you, you're crazy. Thank you. Goodbye.